Alhamdulillah, we started a conversation a few days ago about some of the misconceptions that our young Muslim brothers and sisters have in their minds about Islam. And then we spoke about some of the unwise kind of conversations that we have about Islam. Inshallah, tonight I will start explaining the ayah that inspired this whole conversation. If anyone remembers the translation of that ayah, the translation of that ayah, it says, invite people with wisdom. And this ayah belongs to Surah Al-Nahl. The other ayah that I will use to explain this ayah also belong to the same surah, Surah Al-Nahl. And a very interesting thing about Surah Al-Nahl is that towards the end of this ayah, Allah says, invite people with wisdom. But this surah is full of examples of how you invite people towards wisdom. How, how you invite people with wisdom. It's, this surah itself teaches you to invite people with wisdom. So inshallah, let's begin. But I need your attention now. Because now we are going to understand the ayah of the Qur'an, the tafsir of the Qur'an. So I need your bit, a bit more attention of all of yours. And inshallah, I will be asking you questions. So if you can answer those questions, please answer it out loud. And this is not to put anyone down. It's just for me. Uh, because I will know that you are keeping up with me and this will help, you, help me to continue. So in the same surah, in Surah Al-Nahl, when it begins, in the very beginning, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Anzala minas sama ima'an. He sent the rain down on this earth. And because of that rain, different kinds of crops, zar, different kinds of crops come out, grapes come out, olives come out, palm trees come out, and different kinds of fruits come out. If water did not come down, there would be no life on this earth, right or wrong? If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not send water on this earth, there would be no life on this earth. Now if you look at the things that grow on this earth, is there only one thing that grows on this earth? Or there are different things that grow on this earth? Different things. This is a miracle of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Same water, but different plants. In this ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala divide all of these plants into two categories. The first category is the farmland. Does farm grow on its own? Or does a farmer have to do some kind of work as well? You cannot just have rain water. Rain is necessary, but it's not enough. A farmer has to do some kind of work. A gardener has to do some kind of work. The grapes plant are very delicate. They cannot grow on their own. You have to put in some kind of work. Date trees are very sensitive. They need to be taken care of. So a gardener has to take care of these plants. You cannot just rely on rain water. Rain water alone is not enough. So for farming, in other words, for farming, for grapes, for olives, for these kinds of sensitive plants and fruits that need to be taken care of, we need to make some kind of work to grow them. We have to put in some effort to grow them. But on the other hand, the second thing that Allah mentioned, different kinds of fruits. Now, if you go into the Amazon jungles in South America, and there are hundreds and thousands and thousands and thousands of acres of jungles and trees. Do those trees have fruits? The trees and jungles, do they have fruits? They do. Is there any farmer there? Is there any gardener, gardener there? They grow on their own. So the point that I'm trying to get at is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends water from the sky. As a result of that water, things grow out of this earth. There are things that grow because of our effort. There is a partnership. But then there are things grow because of the gift of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do we understand it so far? Why I'm telling you this example? Because in the same surah later on, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا أَنزَلْنَا عَلَيْكَ مِنَ الْكِتَابِ إِلَّا لِتُبَيِّنَا The only reason I sent down this book, wait a second. Before he said, I sent down what? Now he's saying, I'm sending down the book. So he's going to compare the book to the rain. The only reason I sent this book down is because it will clarify all of your differences. It will become a source of mercy and guidance. So the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes down just like the rain comes down. The rain goes into the earth, the book of Allah, the ayat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala goes into the heart of the people. Earth used to be dead because of rain, it came back to life. The heart of the people used to be dead, the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has the power to bring them alive. In another place in Surah Al-Hadid, Allah mentioned it very beautifully. He said, فَقَسَتْ قُلُوبُهُمْ uh, The people's heart became hard. وَكَثِيرٌ مِنْهُمْ فَاسِقُونَ And the majority of them were corrupt. But in the next ayah, immediately Allah says, I'lamu, you should know, anna Allah yuhi al-arda ba'da mawtiha. Allah gives life to the earth after it had died. Meaning that just like this ummah is dead, Allah has the power to bring it alive. We only need to apply what? Water. And what is the water of this ummah? 
the Quran. Are you with me so far? Do you understand this comparison? Alhamdulillah. Now go back to the first example, the first ayah. The water comes down and there are two kinds of plants that grow. Number one, we need to make in some effort. We need to put some effort in it. And number two, they grow on their own. In the middle of a jungle, there is an apple. In the middle of a jungle, there is an orange. And it happened on its own, right? I did not make any effort. You did not make any effort. We had nothing to do with that. Similarly, in Islam, there will be people who will accept Islam. We did not do any dawah to them. We did not make any effort to them. We did not do anything to them. And they will accept Islam because Allah will put this water in their heart and they will come to Islam and they will accept Islam. Just like that fruit that grows in the middle of the jungle without any human effort, just because of the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, people will accept Islam only because of the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It will happen and it still happens. Even now it happens, right? There are so many amazing stories that if you listen to, subhanAllah, it reminds you about the qudrat, about the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I will give you just one story. My friend... In Dundee, when I came here and I was doing my MPhil in Al Maktoum Institute, which is a part of, used to be the part of University of Aberdeen, there was this one guy from Romania, and he was a son of a minister, of a priest. And just to cut the story short, he saw Kaaba in his dream, and he became Muslim. And he was the only white guy in his town practicing Islam. His father was a minister of religion, he got really upset. He said, You're worshipping devil, you're possessed by devil. He he kicked him out of his house, but he holds on to Islam. People sacrifice because they want to hold on to Islam. Allah gave him this opportunity. He got the scholarship. He came here. He did his MPhil with us. And then he got a scholarship from Exeter University. He did his PhD from there. And now he's teaching in an Islamic university in Turkey, mashallah. So, you know, Allah will grow these fruits. You will never know how it happens, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grow them. But this is an easy part. This is a part where we all say, subhanallah, nare takbir, Allahu akbar, right? But the other part is the difficult part. Let's just try to understand that part. The people will tell you, anthropologists will tell you that human, human civilization, it began when human beings learned to farm. Human civilization could not only survive eating fruits in the jungle, they had to figure out a way to mass produce food. And the only way or the best way to mass produce food is to learn about agriculture. So humanity became civilized. Once agriculture came, cities came. When cities came, civilizations came, nations came. But the first step of civilization was what? If you are with me? Agriculture. Now, if you have a farm, you have a land, you have an agriculture, you have a farm, do you think you still need to direct the water? You have to dig, you have to make a canal, you have to make sure that water is directed, water is delivered. You cannot just rely on rainwater. Rainwater is there. But you have to conserve the water, you have to make sure that you are delivering the water to the plants. Similarly in this ummah, by the way, we as an ummah, are we a civilization or not? Yeah, yeah. yeah, we are a civilization, right? If we are going to survive, then rain water is not enough. The rain is there, Allah has given us this Quran. The rain is coming from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But we need to learn how to conserve that. We need to make effort to deliver that water to the people. And I would argue before we deliver it to the rest of humanity, we have to deliver it to the Muslims first, to ourselves first. I was 19, and I will conclude here. I only have two minutes left. I was 19 when I started studying Quran seriously. And when I studied Quran seriously, I felt that I was cheated for 19 years. I have been born as a Muslim. How come I don't know anything about the Quran? How come my school never taught me Quran? How come my parents don't know about Quran? Why did not they get education in the Quran? Why my neighbors don't know about the Quran? We are one-fifth of the world population. Do you understand this? We are one-fifth of world population. And there are people who are not Muslims and they know Quran better than you and me. How is that possible? How is that possible that I'm a Muslim, but still I have opinions about Quran like non-Muslims have? Non-Muslims think that this book is harsh, it's irrelevant. How do I have these things? Why do I have these things? They are not impressed with the Quran, but why do I have these kinds of opinion? There is some problem. There is some problem. We need to learn how to cultivate, how to farm lands. And we need to learn how to deliver this water down to the people. The rest part, the rest discussion that we will have, that I will have with all of you, we are going to learn this way, how we can deliver this water down to the people, for ourselves, for our children, and their children, and also for the human civilization at the same time, but for the Muslims first. So Allah says, Udu'u, invite, my time is up, tomorrow we are going to start this ayah. 
But I wanted to have you this, this comparison that how Allah compares this book with the water. When you have this comparison, then you will understand how Allah says or how Allah explains in white people with wisdom, inshallah. So just bear with me. Hopefully towards the end of this discussion, everything will make sense. Jazakumullah khair.